In this video, we're going to look at how to update your participant list as part of your Turing scheme project. So when we're logged into the project reporting tool and we're on the dashboard, you just need to scroll down until you get to your application and click on that. And on the application overview, we're gonna scroll down to the bottom until we get to the option of uploading participants list and updating mobility groups and click on that. So we then trigger the change request process and there's two parts to a change request. The first one is updating your participants and this is where there's not actually any changes to mobility groups, you're just progressively providing details about the participants that are going on the mobility groups. Um, and you add those details to the spreadsheet. Um, and when you submit this change, the system's gonna see that you're only submitting your participant list um, and it will be auto approved. So it's not actually checked by any humans. Uh, it's just you're providing uh, an update to the participants. Um, Whereas the second option is when you're when you require uh, changes to the mobility groups, so such as the number of participants that are going on on the mobility groups, maybe the date of a mobility group is changing, the month, for example, um, any actual changes to the mobility groups needs to go through this second option. Um, but for the purpose of this demonstration, we're just going to look at this first option. So I'm going to save and continue, and then I'm prompted to download the participant list. And this is going to download um, any previous changes that I've submitted. So based on uh, my mobility groups, um, maybe I had a change request previously, and I changed the participant numbers for a mobility group from uh, 90 to 100. So there's now 100 participants going. So when I download this spreadsheet, there would be 100 rows in that spreadsheet. And so the, the structure of the file sort of regenerates um, each time uh, you complete the change request. So it's up to date according to any mobility group changes. So now that I've downloaded that, I can open it up. And now that the file's open, I just need to scroll to the top and all the way to the left and I can see the start of the file. So I'm gonna, first thing I'm gonna do is enable editing so that I can edit this file. And so there's some, first thing to read um, is the instructions provided uh, here. So it explains that the columns in gray are just pre-populated from the project reporting tool and just here for reference only. So how this spreadsheet works is that there's one row per participant for each of your mobility groups. So I can see from row four to row 19 is the participants for the shipbuilding to Denmark. And so I need to scroll to the right hand side and up until row 19, I should enter the participant details uh, for for those that are going on the shipbuilding to Denmark trip. Some points to mention about in terms of using this spreadsheet. So you can reduce the columns if needed. So for example, uh, I could reduce this to save some space um, so that I can see more on the screen. You can also zoom in and out uh, using the zoom down here. So again, that might help you in adding the details and being able to see uh, which mobility group uh, it's corresponding to. You can also freeze some of the columns if it makes it easier. So by selecting the first cell here and then going to view tab and freeze panes and freeze panes again, you'll see that the mobility group details on the left have frozen and the participant details are now on the right. So I can 
see clearly that these rows are for the Denmark trip and I could enter this book details up until there and then I could scroll to the right and continue adding their details uh, and scrolling as necessary. So let's continue entering participant details. So we're going to scroll to the right hand side. So we then ask for the date of birth. So this needs to be between the date range stated here. If I don't enter a date between that range, for example, the 1st of January 22, I'll get an error. Now, it's possible to bypass some of the validation in the spreadsheet. Um, and this can happen when you're copy and pasting from other sources. So, for example, if I open uh, another spreadsheet to demonstrate, and I enter that date, 1st of January 2022, it's acceptable in this spreadsheet. But then when I copy and paste it, Copy and pasting, I am overriding the validation in this spreadsheet and it's going to accept it. However, when I then go to upload the spreadsheet to the system, because this is an invalid date according to the requirements of the Turin scheme, it's going to reject it and it's going to say that uh, one of the dates are incorrect. So by copy and pasting, that can cause those sorts of problems to, to bypass the validation that's built into the spreadsheet to try and guide you uh, to enter the correct information. So where possible, um, do try to enter the date manually if possible, so that you get an error when it's when the information you're entering uh, isn't correct. So if I enter a correct date, it will accept it. So we then ask for a student ID number and different types of student ID numbers uh, are displayed up here. Um, and it also mentions that these must not appear twice within the overlapping mobility dates. So of course a participant can't be in two places at the same time. So I'll just enter an example and continue going along the right hand side using the scroll bar. So the next question we're asked is, does this participant require linguistic support? And this only applies if you're within the FE VET funding stream. Um, if you're not, then you can skip past this. Um, if you are within FE VET, then you can select true if you've selected within your mobility group uh, that there are participants that require linguistic support and you've been approved for that funding. So if, for example, uh, as part of this mobility group going to Denmark, there is one participant that requires linguistic support, uh, I would select true here um, and then the rest need to be false to match the mobility group details uh, that I've been approved for. Um, if there are a change to this or any of the de uh, sort of details to the mobility group, uh, again, I need to make those updates as part of a change request by updating the mobility groups. The next question is the mobility start date. And the guidance states that this is the date of arrival for the participant. So for example, uh, if I've stated that this trip to Denmark is going in March, 2023, um, I might state that this participant uh, is going on the 1st of March and they're coming back uh, on the 1st of April. It's important to take note that these dates need to be within the duration that you've been approved for for the mobility group. So if I'd only stated that this mobility group is going to be two weeks and I'm then stating that this participant's going for a month, when I come to request payment for this mobility group, this wouldn't be approved. 
um, because it sits outside of the funding that I've been approved for for this mobility group. So these dates need to be within the duration um, of the for the mobility group um, that have been approved. And again, if there's any details to that, um, those need to be uh, changed and submitted uh, within the system by updating your mobility groups. So we're then asked uh, further details about each participant um, and these options can be selected uh, from the drop downs. Um, so ethnicity, gender, level of education, field of education, the, their email address or the accompanying person if under 16, telephone number, their home address postcode. And then we're asked uh, for details about the sending organization. So this is the uh, organization that's sending the participant on their mobility. So again, uh, selecting from a drop down, and then the organization name, country, and address. And then we get to the receiving organization. And similarly, this is the organization where the participant is completing their mobility. So similarly, uh, the type of organization, their name and address. And important to note here that all of the columns in this spreadsheet are mandatory. Now, if there's uh, a case where you can't enter details, for example, maybe there's not an address line too, um, you could enter NA in here. But all of the columns are mandatory apart from where uh, they stay optional and there's just three columns towards the far end um, that are optional uh, including the last one um, and this is this is important because you can't request funding um, you can't request payment rather for participants that are not complete so when although I'm just uploading details at the moment um, now it's perfectly fine to not enter the details all of the details at this stage um, you might not know all the details about the participant and uh, it's fine to just progressively um, upload these details as you know them. But when you come to requesting the payment, um, all, of the, all of the columns here um, that aren't stated as optional must be fully completed. Otherwise, uh, the system will return an error and it will say that the participants uh, haven't been fully completed. Um, so or if you go to then request uh, a partial payment, you'll get a different spreadsheet and it will only show you the participants uh, for that point of expenditure that have been fully completed. And you may think, uh, where, where are my other participants? And in that other spreadsheet, it states that only the participants uh, that have been fully completed will show in that spreadsheet. So important point just to note there, that you can only request payment for participants that have been fully completed. So we're gonna continue scrolling along and after the receiving organization details, it then asks, is this participant a send learn participant? Um, and again, this needs to match up with the mobility group details. So to this trip to Denmark, I may have stated that there's one send learner and I may have stated that there's three disadvantaged learner participants. So in which case uh, I'd enter those trues to match up um, with the same number that have been approved for in uh, the project reporting tool. Similarly, there's three columns uh, asking for uh, send costs, exceptional costs, and exceptionally expensive travel. And again, these need to match up with the amount you've been approved for within the project reporting tool. So I may have stated that on this mobility group, uh, this participant uh, with, who is send learner participant requires 100 pounds uh, of uh, send costs. And so, that would be acceptable. However, if I was to enter a number greater than that, although it won't tell me at this point that it's invalid, and similarly, when you upload this spreadsheet um, at the change request process, um, 
it will be automatically approved um, by the system because you're just uploading uh, the participants at this stage. But when you come later down the line to request payment for these participants, um, it will then be cross-checked uh, between the amount you've been approved for uh, and the amount you're requesting. And it will see that the amounts don't match up and that you've exceeded that amount um, and your payment request may be rejected. So it's important to note here that the costs you're entering uh, do match up um, with the amounts that have been approved for your project and for each mobility group. So if there was exceptional costs I've been approved for, I could also enter those there and exceptionally expensive travel. And now the last column we're going to come to um, in a moment for the purposes of this uh, demo, uh, this, this first part uh, where we're just updating our participant details, this column is not relevant. Um, it's only relevant when you're um, when you've also made changes to your mobility groups. And we'll come to that um, in a moment. Um, so, so now that I've completed some participant details, um, so of course you complete this uh, as much as you can um, with all the participant details uh, that you have at this point, and then you save the file. And when we go back to the project reporting tool, we can continue past the participant download screen and now we can upload the file that we just updated. So when we browse for files and um, we want to select the most recent uh, participant list that we just updated. Um, if you attempt to upload a participant list that was part of previous change request, you will receive an error and I'll just demonstrate that here. So in this case, um, it's telling me that I must go back and download the participant list from the previous page um, because the structure of the file doesn't match uh, what uh, this change request is expecting at this point. So I may have since then changed the number of participants um, or the uh, details may be removed at this point. Um, so it's always important to download it from the previous screen so that you've got the latest details um, and then you add to that file and upload it here. So if I try that again and upload the participant list that I just made changes to, it will accept it. So we can now save and continue and we get to the check your answers screen and it just confirms that we're updating our participant list and we've uploaded um, the file and we can then submit that participant list. Now the change request uh, is submitted. So this, come, this comes under the banner uh, of a change request, but really it's just a participant uh, upload file. Um, and this will be automatically approved um, within the next uh, sort of five, 10 minutes and I'll receive an email saying that that's been approved. And as I mentioned, that's just the details being approved and accepted into the system. It hasn't actually been verified by a human at this point. And that comes later in the process when the participants are reviewed at the payment request stage. So when you request a payment, the, the cost of living and the, or the finances relating to these participants uh, that I've provided will then be reviewed um, and approved or rejected at that point. So now if I go back to the dashboard and I go back into my application, scroll down to change requests, and I can see that this change request has already automatically been approved. Um, and I can go into it and view the details. So I can see again here it was approved and it was just the participant details uh, that were submitted. So one other point uh, to look at with 
participant uh, changes is when you're removing participants or reducing the number of participants from a mobility group. And I'm just going to show uh, how that process is done. So if you're re removing participants from a mobility group, um, you need to select the second option, which is to update your mobility groups and the participant list. And I'm going to go into my shipbuilding in Denmark mobility group. And you can see I've got 15 learner participants attending. So I'm going to click on make changes and change the learner participants. And I'm going to reduce that down to 13. So reducing it by two. And I'm going to save and save again. So we can see my adjusted project cost has gone down and this change request is now in draft for this mobility group. So I'm going to mark as complete. Now to remove the those two participants, um, I need to download the participant list here and open it up. And I'll enable ed editing. And what I need to do here is to use the last column in the spreadsheet, remove participant. So all of these should be set as no or blank. Um, and that's just the, the default. But in my case, I've selected to remove two participants. Um, now the system doesn't know which two participants I want to remove. And of course, it can't assume uh, which ones, because it would, if it did, it would suddenly uh, remove two at random. So I need to tell it which two uh, to remove. Now, I specifically said that it was two learners. So I need to make sure, looking at the participant type, um, if you're in a funding stream uh, where you can have a company and staff, um, just make sure um, that you're checking this participant type column. Um, but in my case, it's it's two learner participants. So I'm going to say that it's row four and five, the first two participants uh, listed here. So I just need to select from the drop down, yes and yes, to remove those two participants. And I'll save, close the spreadsheet, and then continue to the upload. And I'm going to select the file that I just saved. And it will accept that. So it's verified uh, that the number of participants match up. So it's expecting me to select yes in two participant rows for that mobility group that I selected. Um, and when I save and continue and submit this, uh, change request, it's going to reduce down from 13 and it's going to, from that participant list I uploaded, it's going to remove those two particular participants uh, that I selected in the spreadsheet.